Motorola's One series always has one standout feature, like a movie-sized screen or an action camera. But the Motorola One Zoom may just be the one to get for all that it offers in one package. Okay, enough. Hey, I'm Brian, and this is the Motorola One Zoom review. In the box you find the phone itself, which is already in a complementary clear case. Apart from this, you get a 15 watt fast charger and USB-C cable, as well as some regular headphones, because yes, the Moto One Zoom does have a headphone jack. Apart from this welcome addition, the frame also houses the very loud and full sounding, but unfortunately mono speaker, which interestingly enough, fires at the top. The frame itself is made from painted aluminium and melts into the curved glass back, which has a similar matte finish to the Pixel phones and feels very soft in the hand. Though that does make it pretty slippery, which is not helped by the fact that this is a large and heavy phone, but not more so than other phones with the same screen size. There's also that huge camera bump on the back that I can't exactly say I find that appealing, but it does look much less offensive in person than in pictures. More to the camera system in there later. Under it is the Motorola logo that doubles as a notification LED, which I find smart and useful, but I wish it was RGB and not just white. But you can also check notifications on the front with Moto Display, which I wish was always on. This would also be no problem because the screen is an AMOLED panel. It features Full HD Plus resolution at 6.4 inches and is very bright with vibrant colors. Overall, this is a very nice panel. Actually quite impressive for the price and more punchy than a Mi 9T for sure. Embedded in that display is an optical fingerprint sensor which is okay but not as fast as OnePlus's. Nonetheless a handy addition. And for very fast unlocking, the selfie camera housed in the U-shaped notch up top also does facial scanning in an instant. And the software also has even more smart features like that, as is typical for Motorola. You have the chop to turn on the flashlight and twist to open the camera. Because of this, double pressing the power button opens the assistant, which did take a bit of getting used to, but is actually pretty handy. So is the power button being ridged to make it easier to identify. When you put the phone face down, it can silence itself and the gesture navigation system makes sense and is easy to use. I just wish it didn't need that pill on the bottom taking up space. And all these smart additions are organized into one section and not buried in the settings. Overall, Motorola's is among my favorite Android skins. And its stock Android nature also helps with performance. Apps launch fast and there are no perceptible stutters. What is noticeable, however, is that they don't stay in RAM for that long and thus have to reload every once in a while. More than 4GB of RAM would have been helpful here. The Snapdragon 675 chip is more than capable though, and the 128GB of expandable storage are very welcome. That should last you for a while. And what also lasts for a while is the battery. More than 7 hours of screen on time are no problem with this large 4000 mAh cell. Battery life is a real strong point here, 1.5 to 2 days shouldn't be a problem. It also does charge reasonably fast, but we have honestly seen better than the 1.5 hours of charging time the included 15W brick provides, even from Rotorola themselves. There's no wireless charging, but I can forgive that at this price. The phone is also only splash proof and not fully water resistant. Let's finish up with the main event that is somewhat prominently featured in the name, the camera. Or cameras, rather. There are whopping four sensors here. The main one is the well-known 48 megapixel affair with an f1.7 aperture that we now find on virtually every second phone. Don't get me wrong, that's not a bad thing, as you'll see in the samples. This is then paired with a 16 megapixel wide angle and an 8 megapixel 3x telephoto camera. The last one is only a 5 megapixel depth sensor for better bokeh. Both the main and telephoto cameras have OIS. And I can say this already, I'm very impressed at what Motorola has done with this camera system, especially for the price. The pictures from the main sensor are sharp, have really dramatic contrast and punchy colors. They somewhat even resemble the Pixel 3a in this regard, I would say, which mind you costs the same, but doesn't have multiple cameras. And one of these I find especially impressive, the telephoto camera. And maybe that makes sense, given that it's the standout feature. It's not as soft as you come to expect from telephoto cameras, and the depth compression is extremely pronounced, making the pictures look like from a real zoom lens. And they also share the same natural but punchy colors and dynamic contrast of the main sensor. The wide-angle sensor is a nice addition as well, honestly more important to me than the zoom. When it gets the shot right, it's similar to the other two, but sometimes it misses the white balance a bit. In more challenging lighting conditions, all of this does fall apart more than I would like though. The night mode also isn't that impressive. And as good as the pictures it takes are, the camera app is just abominable. It's slower than it should be to launch, to take pictures, but especially to switch between cameras. And the viewfinder is unapologetically blurry, so much so that you might think it didn't focus correctly. 
And because the pictures that come out are so good, the discrepancy between what you see before and after taking the shot is honestly pretty stark. I haven't had the chance to thoroughly test the OnePlus 7T's camera yet, but I'll definitely need to compare the two in an extra video. Video recording at 4K is very stable, but you can unfortunately only record video with the main camera for some reason. Selfies are good with great bokeh as long as you turn off beautification, and you can even capture front-facing slow-motion video. You could probably already guess that my conclusion is quite positive here. I'm pretty impressed by the one zoom, much more than I previously thought. For 400 euros you get really great build quality, a very good screen, Motorola smart software paired with solid performance, and a camera that doesn't have to hide amongst more expensive phones. When compared to the OnePlus 7T, a very natural competitor I think, you lose out on the faster chip and 90Hz display. Both of those things definitely do add to the perceived smoothness of the experience, but you also do have to pay 50% more for the privilege. This makes the One Zoom a very compelling option at its price point. You could even consider it alongside the Pixel 3a, which has better overall picture quality, but no wide angle or telephoto lens and worse battery life. And compared to the Mi 9T, another great budget option, what you get here is a better camera, again better battery life and a much better software experience. The Moto One Zoom doesn't only get a recommendation from me at its price point, but also in general, especially if you can find it at a discount on Black Friday. Thanks to Motorola for the One Zoom review unit, of course no compensation was provided for this video, and thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you know which buttons to press, and don't forget to press that follow button on Twitter. I'm Brian, and I'll see you in the next one.